This YouTube structural geology help video is to help you answer problems like this where you'll be asked to find a fold axis and interlimb angle. So this is how the question that you might be asked is given. Find the fold axis and interlimb angle with limbs oriented at 331.48 southwest and 298.50 northeast. When we get a problem like this, we're going to do four steps. So I'm going to do each of those steps with you. First, we're going to try and figure out what they mean by fold axis and where we should go to look for that on the stereo net. So I'm going to draw kind of an idealistic fold. We're seeing it in 3D. The fold axis is the top line going across the top hinge of the folds. So it goes like that. The two limbs meet at the fold axis and the fold axis is a line. Uh, now, in this example, the limbs are oriented, so these two surfaces right here are oriented 331, which is to the northwest, dipping to the southwest, and oriented again to the northwest, and but this time dipping to the northeast. So if I were going to sketch these and how they might show up in 3D on a stereo net, I'm going to draw a kind of not great stereo net. There's north, here's south. The first fold limb, we're told, is oriented at 331, and that it's dipping to the southwest. So maybe it hits the bowl like that. And this one, we're told, is striking 298, which is not gonna be as far. Remember, west is 270, so 298 might be like that. And this one is dipping to the northeast, and it's dipping a little bit more steeply than the, the previous one that we saw. So those are what the two limbs might look like on a stereo net. So they're definitely intersecting each other, um, kind of at a, a weird, weird angle, so it's a hard thing to think about, right? You're gonna see this intersection on the stereo net but their intersection line is plunging. So that means that we're dealing with a, a plunging fold. The third thing that we're gonna do to help us visualize this problem is break out the Play-Doh, which every structural geology student should keep some Play-Doh around because you will end up using it quite a bit. And I'm just gonna make some layers and then I'm gonna fold them. And I'm gonna fold one limb, one side of this Play-Doh so that it's similar to the limb that's oriented 331 dipping to the southwest. So that's gonna dip down to the southwest. And I'm gonna orient this limb so that it's striking more, uh, more west than the other limb. And it's dipping down. So this is what you might end up with. Doesn't look great, but you can at least visualize that this limb is dipping this way at this angle this limb is dipping the other way, and that as you move back along the fold, you could find where they start to intersect. Okay, so that's what we're working with. Now, the fold axis here is gonna be the line that runs right along the center of the fold. So this is our, our fold axis. Another way to think of it is the fold axis is where these two limbs are intersecting. So for us on the stereo net, what we're gonna look for is this place where these two limbs are intersecting. And what that intersection point is representing is this line back here, the one where those two planes are coming together. So let's actually break out the stereo net and see how we should be plotting this. Okay, so the first limb was dipping 48 degrees to the southwest, and it was oriented at 331. So I'm gonna count back from 360, from the north. 360, 350, 340, 330. So here's 331, and that's limb number one. And it's dipping to the southwest, it's dipping down here. So I know I'm gonna be counting in from the left if I rotate that tick mark to the top, and I'm counting in 48. 10, 20, 30, 40, 48. 
And I'm going to go ahead, because a limb is a plane, it plots as a line on a stereo net. So I'm going to complete this sketch. All right, and I'm going to rotate it back to north. Okay. The second limb is striking 298, dipping 50 northeast. So this time I'm going to count from 270, 270, 280, 290, 300. So 298 is right here. This is limb number two. And before I rotate it, actually, I should think about where I'm going to be um, counting in the dip from. So this one is dipping to the northeast. Up here is northeast. So this time, if I rotate that number two to the north, I'm going to need to count in from the right. And I'm counting in 50. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. rotate back to the north and let's make sure that this checks in with how we visualized these planes being worked out in space so remember when you want to visualize a plane on a stereo net start with your hand vertical going right over your eraser striking in whatever direction you put your tick mark so for the second limb for example we'd start like this dip it out to um, mimic this line hitting the stereo net so we've got one plane dipping like this. And then for this um, arc number one, limb number one, we do it but to the other side. So we're dealing with a situation like this, two limbs dipping outward from each other, where they're both dipping relatively steeply, both striking to the northwest. That's what we sketched in this picture. So that means that we're doing pretty good. Um, now we talked about how the intersection of those limbs was gonna be the fold axis, and it is. Well, let's think about why that's true. I had my hands intersected like this, right? And they were kind of dipping down. And if I took a pencil and I wanted to mimic what that point meant in real life, I could take the tip of my pencil, the end of my pencil, and I would put it right above my eraser and I would tilt the pencil down and imagine tilting it down just however many degrees I am from the edge. So here I'm about 20 degrees from the edge so that's what I've imagined this hinge line being like. So if I take my hands, put them on either side of the pencil, that's really what I'm imagining is that intersection point or intersection line. So, so far so good. And then I can just read that value off in the same way that you would read any point off a stereo net. So I rotate it to the horizontal, put a tick mark, count in to get my plunge. So 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Plunging 18. Rotate back to north. And then I figure out whatever that is for the trend. So this is 270, 280, 290, 300, 310, 312. So the fold axis is trending about 312 degrees, plunging 18 degrees. Okay, next part of the problem asks to find the interlimb angle. So let's think about what that actually is. In this example of a pretty cylindrical fold, the interlimb angle is just the angle between these fold limbs. So you could imagine if I made an idealized fold I made it like a little tent. That's the interlimb angle, the angle between the limbs. And that can get confusing on the stereo net because as you can see here, the, the hinge line doesn't keep going, right? We only see the bottom half of a, of a sphere when we deal, deal with stereo nets. So if we wanted to imagine this fold to keep going and what we'd actually see at the surface, we'd have to imagine the top half of a stereo net. So let's think about what we actually need to be able to find um, the interlimb angle. First, we need to know 
the fold axis. And the reason why the fold axis is important is that if we can imagine viewing the fold directly right on, then our viewing plane is perpendicular to the fold axis and we get a really good view of what this plane or what the fold actually looks like. If you can imagine taking the fold we made earlier, right? And taking a piece of plexiglass. Well, first let's view it like this. So you can actually see the angle. It's, it's relatively tight. But if we imagined viewing it not right on, but we imagined taking a plane and being able to cut it and view this from the side. You can see that if you don't view this from the right geometry, you end up with a much wider angle than what you've anticipated, what you would expect. This is the importance of actually knowing the model and knowing where your measurements are coming from. So we wanna make sure that we are viewing the fold directly right on in order to get the best measurement for the fold angle or for the interlimb angle. The way that we can do this is we can define that plane. We want this plane, we want it to be perpendicular to the fold axis. We can also imagine other vectors that might be in that plane. So if we have a normal to this fold limb and a normal to this fold limb, those would be in that same viewing plane. Let's see if I can draw this again. If we draw a fold like this, here's a normal, here's a normal. The plane that contains those two normals is perpendicular to the fold axis. And in that plane, we can accurately count out what the interlimb angle is. So let's see this on a stereo net. So the first thing we said was that it should be 90 degrees um, because it's, the plane is perpendicular to, um, to the fold axis. The other thing we said was that the perpendiculars to the fold limbs or the perpendiculars to those planes should be in this plane where we can accurately count out the interlimb angle. So let's first find the poles to limbs one and two. We'll rotate one to the north and then we're gonna count over 90 degrees and put a point. So here's two, 12, 22, 32, 42, 52, 62, 72, 82. If I go here, it would be 92. So right here, that's gonna be P1 or the pole to limb number one. And now we'll do the same thing for limb number two. Rotate it to the north go to the horizontal and count over 90. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. Here's P2. All right, so now I'm gonna rotate it so that our pink point, our fold axis is on the horizontal. And I'm gonna count over 90 from that. Uh, we decided it was at 18, so there's two here. 12, 22, 32, 42, 52, 62, 72, 82, 92, and back to is 90. And so this is the pole to the fold axis, which is not really a pole, but we're gonna mark it as a point. Now this pole defines a plane where we can accurately count the interlimb angle. So let's go ahead and draw in that grade circle. Now, one thing that should stand out to you is that the poles to our two fold limbs are in that plane. Now, that's not a surprise. That's coming from the definition of how we defined this plane. We said that the normals to these two fold limbs should exist in a plane perpendicular to the fold axis. And that's exactly what we're representing here. This is a plane perpendicular to the fold axis containing the poles to the two fold limbs. And so along that arc, that's where we can measure the interlimb angle. 
All you do is go along the line and you count the number of spaces. So 2, 10 is 12, 22, 32, 42, 52, 62, oh, I lost count, sorry, 2, 12, 22, 32, 42, 52, 62, 72, 82, 84, 86, 87. So the interlimb angle is 87. Now let's say that you didn't think this through. You hadn't thought about the geometry of the problem and you were just gonna count in here because you thought I'm measuring close to the full tinge. Then you might only count 20 or 24 degrees. And if you did that, what you're doing is imagining slicing this at a, slicing that fold at a different angle than perpendicular to the uh, fold axis. You wanna make sure you're seeing the full profile of the fold. Okay, so just to go over this one more time, you were asked for the fold axis and the interlimb angle. To do that, you plotted both fold limbs their intersection point was the fold axis. Then to get the inner limb angle, we plotted the poles to both limbs and we plotted the uh, point that was 90 degrees from the fold axis. And when we took those three points, we found that they lied along one plane in space. And that plane was great because it allowed us to look at our folds straight on and it gave us the right spot to count our interlimb angle. I know that this might seem like a, a lot of steps and the sketches might seem like that's a lot of work involved, but I feel like if you don't see where things like this are coming from, then you're not gonna remember the steps and the stereo net is just gonna become a series of steps that you do to get the answer instead of actually a useful tool in the field. Um, and hopefully in some future videos, you'll see how even if you don't know the exact steps to follow, if you know what you're aiming for and you can visualize what the stereo net is asking for, um, you can come up with your own method to get what you want. All right, thanks y'all.